Mr. Warren Bees, good to see you again, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's always good chatting to you. Absolutely. Mining Java 2018, a bit, bit of positive uptick in the air this year. There's definitely a, an air of optimism. Um, a lot of comments about green shoots. The concerns are obviously that spikes don't mean a recovery. And spikes also mean you can't plan properly. So it's preferable to have a smoothed recovery. And that's what we're hoping for because you can plan around it. The projects are easier to plan. Um, your spend is easier to plan. Spikes benefit companies that are on nimble and can respond to the spikes, but not, it's not a good overall strategy. Mining Charter 3 has been in the news a lot. So are we seeing some... Uh, what's the latest on that scenario? Well, Mining Charter 3, the minister unfortunately didn't take the opportunity to clarify what was happening. Uh, it's a golden opportunity that I think is lost. Uh, there are a number of concerns regarding Mining Charter 3. The court cases are coming up in the next couple of weeks. Very difficult and it is definitely impacting on investment decisions at the moment. And in terms of investments, the Sura Ramaphosa coming into the presidential race, um, obviously good for business? It's been good for business. There was a recovery uh, in, in December when that announcement was made. There is a level of optimism with him taking over the presidency, the ANC, and there is an expectation. There's a massive expectation, and it's a question of delivery now on that expectation. And the DMR, uh, will we see a shake-up there, I think, <laughs> hopefully? <laughs> uh, there's an expectation that there will be a regime change within the DMR. I think most people are, are looking forward to regime change. But it's only at the top, and this is what uh, many people forget. The mid-tier DMR doesn't go away. They remain in, in <laughs> power. They're there, and you don't mess up those relationships. Absolutely. And, and uh, we've got a key relationship with water. Uh, how's it going on the mining side with that key resource? The water side of things has always been an issue on the mining uh, for the mining industry. It's been a focal point, the use of it, the reclamation, the reuse, that has always been ongoing. I think the current Cape Town water crisis has just brought that home, a uh, very stark reality with every aspect of the business. And the mines have t uh, typically used grey water, that, that those aspects are continuing, but it's the potable water that remains of concern and that will impact on the industry this year if it's not resolved. And the important thing is it's not just Cape Town. The entire country is, is facing uh, potential, similar potential concerns and, and the mining industry is, is trying to address that, but it will impact if it is not addressed in the near future. And any, any key core cases you're busy, busy with at the moment? Um, any exciting projects? A number of projects. We've seen quite a, a strong uptick in commercial activity, which is good. Very good uh, price point, so transactions between 300 million and, and 1.2 billion, so very good movement along the commercial side of things. And that's really where the positive side comes from because it moves assets around and we're hoping that that's going to continue in 2018. Artificial intelligence, the uh, uh, next revolution. Uh, how are companies adapting to these changes? Well, there's companies that are adapting and companies that are putting their heads in the, in the sand. You can't put your head in the sand. It's changing. It's not going away. Um, artificial intelligence, absolutely critical. Internet of Things, absolutely critical for sustainable future mining. And companies that aren't acknowledging that um, are going to face difficulties. Have you seen a, a culling of some, some sort of heavy fat companies in this last recession and only the strong coming out at the end of the end to enjoy the fruits? A number of the companies that have survived were cash rich and created the war chest and, and saw what was coming. They've survived, they, they put their hands in their pockets and they've survived. The companies that haven't survived were obviously cash strapped and highly leveraged, highly financed. And of course the financiers, investors have limited patience. And those companies are up for sale in most cases. If they haven't gone into business rescue, they, they're up for sale now. Uh, and, and that's probably the right thing. They need companies that can put money in for, for the development. Is that the key to for sustainability, to have enough in the war chest to get through the bad times? Yes, absolutely. And, and the, the, the bad times, you need to plan for them. The, the cycles are shorter at the moment and you need a war chest. You can't simply spend everything that you have. And Donald Trump as president, how's that affected <laughs> the industry? Well, <laughs> It's, it's been an interesting it's been a year. No. It, it's been a year. <laughs> um, obviously, his policies on coal mining and global uh, 
changes. Uh, very, very important because it does send the messages to the rest of the world. Again, it creates expectations. And regardless of what you think of him as a president, his policies and the changes create expectations. Those expectations create positivity, and off the back of positivity, people make investment decisions. Absolutely. And we've seen platinum and coal showing some promise. So what are your predictions for the rest of the year commodity markets? Coal, again, very good at the moment. It's, it's been good from, from about October. Biggest concerns with coal were the strikes, so the, the unions, and again, you know, threatening strikes. So that's been the biggest concern because there is a price spike, um, perhaps smoothing out a bit now, but there is a price, it's good pricing, and they need to produce. Anything that can disrupt production, they are concerned about. Platinum's very interesting, Sabanya, Stillwater, Lonman, all of these transactions this year um, are rearranging the platinum industry in South Africa. And finally, uh, you, uh, well, you've been global head of mining for a year, how's that been going at, at Hogan? It's been going extremely well. It's fantastic to have the ability to connect with different thinking people across the globe. We, we, it takes away insular and siloed thinking when you can connect with, with colleagues across the globe. And there's just phenomenal talent and, and uh, importantly, nothing's new. Something's been done somewhere in the world and we can tap into that and that's probably been the, the biggest benefit for us. Absolutely. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank you very much. Nicholas, uh, good year for mining. Uh, what's, your, what's your record report card for the last 12 months? It's been, a, it's been a good year. It's been an extremely busy year um, with all the, the changes and the uncertainty that's come about in the industry. We've seen a lot of movement, um, particularly on the, on the commercial side. We've had some investors uh, pulling out, which has resulted in disposals and divestments. We've seen um, certain persons or certain companies taking um, taking those opportunities in hand and, and we've seen a lot of acquisitions through those processes. So it's been a busy year. So taking advantage during the down times, that must be the key to, to, to sort of big mega companies. So we've seen um, a lot of mega companies taking advantage, but we've also seen some of the juniors taking advantage. Um, getting involved in, in transactions where they're buying um, mines that are in care and maintenance that historically um, had a lot of capital put into them um, that was just not worthwhile to continue to run and um, that they've been uh, picking up those operations for, for a good price and being able to make that, make that work. And are we, are we seeing most of the money come from Asia or where's most of the FDI? Uh, a lot of the money is coming from Asia. Um, there's some internal money through, through our internal funders that are, that are coming to the party. Um, we've also seen collaborations between um, bigger mining houses, uh, bigger contracting companies, coming together um, and, and assisting junior miners in developing uh, reserves that, that they wouldn't have had the money before to do. So we've seen coal off-takers come and pre-buy coal. We've seen uh, contract miners come and uh, mine on, on credit um, until the mine is up and running and, and there's something produced out of it. So, so we've seen a lot of stakeholders coming together to, to make it work. And a busy year for you in the courtrooms. Or what are some of the highlights uh, of some of the cases you've been involved in? So we have been busy in the, in the courtrooms. Um, unfortunately, where the industry has gone is instead of engaging, um, a lot of the time they've decided to, to go to the courts. Um, we've seen a lot of um, applications to court to force the, the Department of Mineral Resources to make decisions on, on certain matters. Um, there's been a string of, of Section 11 applications that have been up, that have taken too long in certain clients' views, um, and we've had to push those. So a lot of the, the, the court cases is in relation to decisions that need to be made by the department. And with water becoming more scarce, are we seeing a greater stringency on water licenses being issued? Definitely. Um, a lot more uh, enforcement in terms of the licenses. Um, so a greater presence from uh, the court blue scorpions from, from the state, um, attending various mine, mines, um, issuing orders, directives. Um, so there is definitely a, more emphasis on water. And mine closures is another big talking point. Are we seeing uh, the reuse of old mines, agriculture, different uh, purposes therein? Correct. I think there is um, a particular drive at the moment, um, particularly taking into account the, the, the state of, of the industry and the financial resources available. Um, the, what we've seen is, is a stakeholder engagement between government, um, you know, the mining houses, um, communities getting involved to, to try and deal with that, the closure aspect. 
and collaboration seems to be the buzz, buzzword today. Are, are we seeing more of that, people hunting in packs? So collaboration is there, we are definitely seeing it. Um, and I think also a theme to go with that is, is planning. I think we've, we've started to, to see a lot of planning and collaboration come together to, to make the future work. Absolutely. And, and, and young miners, are you seeing a lot of skilled young professionals joining the ranks or where can it be improved? So we are seeing a lot of, of, a lot of juniors come up the ranks, and particularly in, in the engineering um, sector of, of the mining companies. Um, we're seeing younger um, business entrepreneurs come into the picture and with that obviously comes a different type of thinking. Um, we've seen a lot of young mining companies come into to the fold with a totally different way of thinking about building the company, about transformation, about community investment, um, with a totally different idea, which is refreshing. It does seem to be a genuine interest in, in, in that those, those points you just raised, and more than just lip service in, in years gone by. Young people seem to almost care, if you to, so to speak. And we've seen that, for example, in, in trans, transformation. The mining charter, even though it has come up and it's, it's um, been contentious, um, certain of the juniors that are coming into the picture say that's not just the benchmark, we have to look further than that. How do we go about that? How do we set it up? Um, you know, it's not just about econ black economic environment, but it's about broad based black economic empowerment. How do we get the communities involved? How do we get the employees involved? Do we just look at one community or should we be looking at five communities as part of the process? So again, different way of thinking. Also, infrastructure development is a key talking point. The rail networks, are we really maximizing those yet or where can we improve on no, that? I think we're not maximizing it. Um, there, is, there is space for that um, and it still needs, still needs to work. Absolutely. Outlook for 2018, uh, exciting times ahead? I think a very exciting time ahead. I think there's still a lot of um, certainty that needs to come. I think industry is demanding that certainty. Um, I think we would have seen that through the speech of, of Minister Zwane. A lot of people were looking for the certainty. A lot of people have said that they haven't received that certainty. Um, and I think that demand will still be there. I think once we get it, I think we'll have a, have a good 2018. And a change of leadership obviously would be a good fill-up if, if Ramaphosa got in? Um, it seems to be. The, the expectation is that things will be on, on the move up uh, once that change happens. Platinum coal, uh, expectations for the rest of the year? I think, um, Coal, always good. Um, I think um, the coal industry has gone through its, its culling process. Um, the, the, the companies are leaner, the processes are leaner, um, and they're able to handle um, the, the current situations, and I think it's going to be better moving forward. On the platinum side, we'll still have to see how that goes. Finally, the Internet of Things, just how, how far can that be taken into, into a mining scenario? Well, we've seen now, just for an example, um, a, a Wi-Fi app that's been set up for certain communities um, and how that has transformed how uh, mining companies are researching what the community needs, what the community wants. Um, so I think that Internet of Things is, is going to change the way we deal with things moving forward. And we have to move with that, uh, move with that theme. Death or die, as they say. Yes. Great stuff. Thanks, Thanks for your time, sir. Thanks very much.